Hello again, Nathan here from the ebook reader blog. For this review, we've got the Kobo Clara BW. BW stands for black and white, of course, because they released it at the same time as the Clara Color. Uh, they're virtually identical aside from the screen. They got the same exact design here. It's a six inch model. It's got this texture on the plastic, which is different from the previous Clara model. I kind of like it actually. It gives a little bit uh, nicer feel to it. Um, on the back, you got this sort of pattern here. You got the USB-C port on the bottom, nothing fancy here. There's no speakers or anything like that. You got the power button located up here on the top edge. Um, so like the other new Kobos, this one's user repairable. They sell replacement parts for it, so that's pretty cool, but I don't really know how useful that is. Ultimately, a new screen costs $90 plus shipping, so it uh, sort of depends on your technical level there. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the features here. So you got the front light with adjustable color temperature. Uh, it's a well-lit room here, so you don't really need the front light. Um, but I'll go ahead and crank it up since it uh, helps the camera focus and you got the warm front light there It's not as orange as some other Kobos and some other devices I've re reviewed um, But does have that warm light there so they can kind of vary from one to the next you never really know um, So yeah, it looks good with the light off. That's one thing about e-ink screens You can turn the light off in a well-lit area you don't really even need the front light with Kobos You can also adjust the front light by swiping up and down the left side of the screen, which is nice You don't have to fiddle with the menus um, it's always handy to do it that way. So um, with this new model, they have uh, a newer screen technology. So it does refresh faster. Um, it's not quite as dark. Like the text isn't quite as dark as the previous Clara 2E. If you've seen my review of that, I had a comparison comparing the two screens with the newer one it is a little bit faster, but the older one actually is a little bit darker. I have, I'll put the uh, link to the comparison of that in the video, but overall responsiveness is better on the newer Kobo here. Uh, you can navigate your device. It's a little bit quicker, a little bit zippier to turn pages. So that's definitely a plus. And the ink screen does look good. It does look better than some of the earlier generation models. You got the usual features like adding bookmarks and highlights. Highlights are a lot smoother than they used to be. Kobo used to be kind of jittery and it was hard to get it to place just right, but definitely a lot smoother than it used to be. You can add and remove highlights easily. Um, those also appear on your annotations list. You can uh, use the pinch zooming gesture. I used to think this was kind of jittery too. It would like go to a blank part of the page. It was hard to get the font size just right, but they've actually refined it uh, since they've introduced it. It does work better now. It's easier to fine tune your font size by just using the pinch gesture. You don't have to go into the menu to adjust it. Tapping the center of the screen will open up the on-screen menu. You can access the table of contents from here, jump chapters, run searches. Uh, this little icon's for the annotations list, so anything you highlight or bookmark will get added here for easy reference, and you can jump back to it easily. Um, there's a few other things up here too, like you can add stuff to your wish list and view details of the book, write reviews, stuff like that. They have little their little hints and tips prompt that shows you different things that the device can do. We already covered most of this stuff. Uh, Kobo's devices will also sync, so if you have multiple devices or using the app, you can sync your reading position, but that doesn't work with side-loaded books, just with the Kobo's books like Overdrive books. All right, so let's exit the book, talk a little bit about the home screen, the library view. So this is how your library lays out, and you've also got the home screen. So they're not entirely ad-free. They will show a couple ads at the bottom, as you can see right here. You get the Kobo Plus ad. So they have like Kobo Plus for the ebook store, where you can like subscribe to uh, you know a selection of books to access. Um, they got audiobook support, so it doesn't have speakers, like I said, but it does have Bluetooth support, so you can listen to audiobooks over Bluetooth. Um, you've also got the overdrive support built in for library ebooks are really easy to borrow library ebooks on Kobo's devices, which is nice uh, over in the settings menu. So you have like pocket articles, you got your reading activity. There's a few beta features. They, they used to have games in here, but they removed all the games for some reason. Um, and then you got the large print mode, the sketch pad, which I showed on a couple earlier reviews. It's just a basic sketch pad. You can write with your finger and then it'll get saved to your library, the notes. So you got some different stuff over here. You can set up your different accounts. You can set up how the device well like with the lock screen and stuff there are a bunch of different dictionaries to install not just English dictionaries device ports a bunch of different languages so you've got a lot of options for that um, so you've also got some different layout options for the home screen or for your library view here so we're using list mode right now you can also switch over to cover view if you wanted to view the covers the only thing I don't like about that is like the uneven size of the covers I kind of wish they were all uniform but you know it's just kind of personal preference you got different sorting options different filtering options like if you just wanted to view your audiobooks or your overdrive books you can filter that out then you've got the dial on the right side of the screen to jump around to different parts of your library. You can also use the arrows to go one page at a time. Um, so yeah, okay, uh, if you hold down on a book, you do get a few different options uh, as well. 
So Kobo's devices support a number of formats, including EPUB. Uh, when you get them from Kobo store, they're actually KeyPub. It's like a K in front of EPUB. They're a little bit different. They have some different form uh, features like the you know, reading statistics. The EPUB um, uses a different engine. Uh, I kind of don't like the EPUB engine. I mean, it's my own personal preference, but uh, like I feel like the word spacing is just too close together. I like the Kobo's formatting better. You can convert your EPUBs to KeyPubs. Um, so, I mean, it's just sort of a personal preference, but you, it does support EPUBs, um, and a variety of other formats like comic formats as well. A lot of, you know, typical formats for eBooks. Uh, you've got some different options up here in the reading settings. So you can configure the header and the footer to display different information, or you can just turn them off if you want to maximize the amount of screen, uh, available for the text. Uh, so you can, you know, set up the time remaining in book. It will show you, or like the pages left in the chapter, you got the different refresh settings for the screen. So like not all devices offers stuff like this where you can customize the page refresh settings and you also got the different on-screen controls settings you can set up uh, different uh, setting for tapping or swiping only so it's got the dark mode uh, dark mode does look good on the screen uh, as far as that goes I mean it refreshes nicely um, the text looks you know stands out nice but uh, you do get a little bit of ghosting and a, a little bit of uh, one thing with Kobo is dark mode is it doesn't invert anything else might be kind of jarring if you're actually using it at night because like the library or the yeah the library and the dictionary and stuff like that still all in a uh, light mode so it only inverts the actual ebook um, but the refreshing is pretty good but you can see like in the top left corner of the screen that little icon from that menu isn't disappearing until it does a full page refresh which i had set for 10 pages if so if there's something like that's bugging you you can set the refresh frequency to refresh more often um, get a cleaner look on the page, avoid ghosting somewhat. But overall, it's pretty good. The screen is, you know, definitely more responsive uh, than the older screens, and it does look good. Um, you got a lot of font adjusting options with Kobo's, which is nice. You can customize the font weight. You can sideload fonts. So there's a good selection of pre-installed fonts. You can sideload your own as well if you'd like. Uh, you can adjust everything from this window here, and you get the before and after look. One thing that often gets me when I'm adjusting the font is, like, for some reason, while it's more responsive, the font adjustment window always takes a couple seconds to load. So uh, sometimes I'll double press that. You just have to be patient, let it open. And same deal with like scrolling to the next page. It takes it a couple seconds to load. For some reason, that's always been a little bit slower to respond than other parts of the interface. But, you know, it's not like you're changing the font type all the time. Uh, and then you also have the different font sizes or the font spacing, margin settings, uh, a lot more settings than you get with uh, something like a Kindle, which only has three settings. Uh, so it's really nice to be able to customize the margins. I know some people like to have the text go all the way to the edge of the screen. And you got the different justification options as well, centered. Uh, or if you want the ragged right margin, uh, you can turn off the justification. So you got a bunch of settings as far as layout goes, which is really nice on the Kobo's devices. You got the reading stats with the Kobo EPUB eBooks, not with the other books, but just the Kobo EPUB eBooks, which is kind of cool. It shows you how much time you got left in chapter and stuff like that. Um, another stuff, some of the other stuff on here, you got the search. So when you're running searches, you can just search the dictionary or the Kobo store. You can select to search your current read, uh, and then it'll go ahead and search the book. Uh, I noticed that it will also pick up other words that contain that word like research. Um, so it's not just giving you just that word. Maybe if you put it in quotes, but I didn't try that. But once you select the, um, search term, you can, you know, jump around to the different parts of the books easily, it's nice and responsive. So. Yeah, searching works pretty well on this device. Uh, as far as the six inch screen goes and the black and white screen, it's really good for eBooks. I mean, you can read other types of content on it too, like uh, comics and manga, um, but obviously black and white might not be ideal for that. Some are in black and white though, so it might not matter. Um, with the comics and stuff, you can rotate it to landscape mode. For some reason, you can't rotate ebooks to landscape mode on the Claro models, but you can rotate other types of content like comics. So that can help with the smaller screen size, but you might be better off with a bigger model like the seven inch or eight inch Kobos. Uh, if you wanted to read a lot of uh, comics or PDFs, especially be better on the larger screen, but you know, it's doable on the smaller screen. Um, you know, obviously the black and white is the limitation here, but uh, they do have the Kobo color model. So um, I'll go ahead and put a link to that review. I posted that a while back as well. So, you know, if you're going to be reading uh, like comics and stuff, you might want to consider the color model, but the black and white model is great for eBooks. It just has like superior contrast. The text stands out more. You don't need to have the front light cranked up as high. So uh, check out the uh, comparison review with the color model if you wanted to, you know, consider that. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Check out the ebookreader.com and the ebookreader YouTube channel for more info. Thanks, guys. Bye.